today to find out more about the developments taking place here at Hena Memorial Hospital. I'm on my way inside now to meet the estate's project manager, Steve Ward. Hi right, David, just to explain the reason we carried out this survey at Hena. We made a conscious decision to go around all the old boiler houses and all the old ductworks and re reassess it again. We've got an extensive run, a very old uh, cast steel pipe work, which runs out through all under the ward areas in the hospital and we've found at each sample point we've found some asbestos debris, very minute samples, so it's uh, indicating its presence throughout the duct and the duct is actually lined with uh, asbestos boarding, what they use as a former to, to form, the, form the ducts and then pour concrete around the sides. And unfortunately you know, this is where we found the asbestos debris in all the duct works and in the boiler house. So David, we're in the water to Ina and one of the issues we've got is bed evacuation, taking patients out, out of the ward in the event of a fire mm. on the bed. And unfortunately, uh, the access and the pathways and all, it just don't make that possible. So we have to remove patients from the bed and take them out on ski sheets, which is not very, not very practical or good really. And also it means staffing levels have had to increase quite a bit, so it's a big issue and it's something we can't resolve without major, major works. Hi right, David, we're in the outpatient department now and the problem we've got here is, is the building, it's very old, it doesn't lend itself to a refurbishment to current guidelines for healthcare outpatients because of space, ceiling heights, the structure, it is really just not feasible to, you know, to bring it up to standards in its current format. Hi David, one of the other problems we've got is a bit of settlement at Ena, and as you can see here we've got quite a difference in floor levels. There's a 150mm drop on this side, which we've had to put a new floor in just to bring the level back up to make it usable. Well, it's an ongoing problem, we've got it contained at the moment, but it's a problem we need to resolve in the future. Hi David, we're in the main boiler room now. Uh, we have cleared all the asbestos debris out. What we haven't cleaned out is anything what we couldn't get to or access. So. The problem that's caused now is resilience. We can't just set to and replace these boilers and if we get a burst pipe, because there's a danger of asbestos being there, we just can't do it. So we could basically, we could be in a situation where we just say we just can't put your boilers back on, we've just got to move the patients out and then re-look at it and uh, you know, come up with a, a quite extensive schedule of works to, to sort the problem out. Well, thanks again, Steve, for showing me around today. It's been really uh, enlightening and surprising because uh, I came and not expecting to see all the lights still working, all the heat on, uh, and the building still uh, really quite active. Well, we made a conscious decision to maintain the building. We're just going to carry on maintaining it electrically, mechanically, grounds and gardens, and until a decision's been made about the future, just to keep the building in a fit state. See, and that makes sense, and, and thanks again for your time. Well, having had that tour, I'm now going to put some questions to Andy Lazelle and Dr Sheila Newport from the Southern Derbyshire Clinical Commissioning Group. Well, thanks Andy and Sheila for joining me today to talk about the situation at Hena Memorial Hospital. I'd like to take this opportunity to ask questions that have been raised by local people following the public meeting that was held back in January. There's been some talk in the town that the decision to close the hospital has already been made. Are you able to reassure us that this is not the case? Thanks David. Um, yes, we can absolutely uh, reassure everyone that that's not the case. Um, the hospital, the situation with the hospital at the moment arose, as we all know, because of the finding of asbestos in it. And um, that has really provoked the need to uh, explore um, the possibilities for the future for HENA. What it gives us the opportunity to do is to try to look um, in more depth at, at plans for providing um, services that are fit for the future in HENA. But up to now, there have been absolutely no decisions made about what those might look like. And following our public meeting, we'll be um, working with uh, the local population to look at some of those options. What do you say to people who are saying that the asbestos has been discovered at the hospital is a red herring? Because they argue that the rebuild costs are the same 
as replacing and fixing the asbestos? The asbestos isn't, isn't a red herring. I mean, there, there obviously is asbestos in the building, but that's not the only problem with, with the Hena Hospital. It, it is an old building and there are increasing problems in terms of ensuring it complies with fire regulations, um, new electrical re regulations and disability access as well. I, th I think the other thing I would add is that actually rebuilding the hospital would cost a lot more than simply treating the asbestos as it is in, in place. So we have to make quite sure if we do have a new building that actually we're getting um, everything that we can out of the investment which we're going to make. Is there any chance that the hospital could be reopened again whilst you consider the options? The problem is that although we found asbestos in the fabric of the building, there isn't asbestos in the air. But if we were to reopen the hospital and bring services back here, there's the possibility that if there's any maintenance or anything that needs to be done in the hospital, we would have to empty the hospital again in order to carry out that maintenance. And we could be in a position um, exactly as we are now, where we've, we've, or where we've been, where we've had to move people who were unwell out of the hospital as an emergency. And that clearly isn't good for people and, and really isn't a good way forward. Is there a plan in place that you can share with everyone? No, no, there isn't, not at this stage. Um, um, the full asbestos report only became available in December, so it would have been quite wrong for us to, to rush through with, with a, a plan straight away. Um, what we want to do, as we've said, is to take our time, talk to, talk to local people, and work out what the options are for the future. And we need to give all of those full consideration. And we've got a whole series of meetings planned with um, smaller groups of people around HENA, so we can discuss all of the options with them. Do you think the people of Hena should have a new hospital? I think the people of, of Hena, there's no doubt that they should have um, services in Hena of the highest quality. Um, what that will look like uh, has yet to be determined in the detail of it. Um, and clearly some of the things that need to be taken into consideration is that we don't have unlimited resource and that resource uh, needs to be used fairly across the whole of the area that we serve. But there's no doubt that there should be high quality services for HENA. Uh, and you mentioned resource there. What will the budget of that resource actually be? Um, because we haven't got a plan and haven't scoped all the options, um, we couldn't put a figure on the budget for this resource at the moment because really you know, there's, there's been some early scoping of what various options would cost, but we're nowhere near looking at the budget overall, and it will really, um, though unlimited, we need to make our plans and then, and then look further at that. People are calling for a new midwife-led birthing service, a new hospital, an A&E department and, and many other facilities. Will these be possible, all of them, in the new building? One of the commitments that we gave at the, the last public meeting was that we will be completely open um, and frank with people about what we could and couldn't afford. And what's really important here is to come up with a permanent, sustainable future for, um, for the future of health services in HENA. So we need to look at all of the options, in, in, as we've said. Um, and the NHS, as with lots of other parts of the public services, um, face some quite severe financial constraints, so we have to take that into account. But we will look at the options and we will be clear about the decisions as we, as we make them. Is there anything you'd like to comment uh, on this, Sheila, particularly from a GP's perspective? Yes, as a GP and something that everyone will be aware of really is that we've got an ever-increasing population of older people compared to, say, if we looked 20 years ago. And for those people, um, there are many services that can be provided within the community and in their own homes to keep them at home, and that's what they would want to do. Um, and that needs to be taken into account in the planning overall of how we look at, at services. Um, also, as 
you know, we've said already that there is a, a limited um, financial resource for all of this and we need to be sure that where, where we are putting the resources is giving the best possible service for, for the population and is most appropriate to the needs of the population. Thanks for those comments and, and what are the timescales for the new build? The timescales aren't absolutely set yet because clearly we're just in the process of looking at the planning and the options. But as we have said, we'll be coming back um, at the end of May to a public meeting and following that time there'll be a, a period of consultation with the public. We plan that by the end of 2014 we will have an agreed plan of the way forward for services in HENA. Um, after that, I would anticipate that it's going to take a minimum of two years before those, are all, the, those plans are all brought to fruition. At the public meeting, you made a number of commitments to the people of HENA and the surrounding areas. Can you explain again what those were? Mm. Yes, at the meeting we gave four commitments to the people of HENA. The first was to ensure that services would continue to be provided locally within HENA. Um, and as the first sign of that, the blood clinic will be opening in HENA very soon at the old fire station. The second commitment we gave was the one we've been talking about, that if it becomes um, necessary to demolish the hospital, then we will put another NHS building in its place on the same site. The third commitment was to be completely open with the people of HENA about what we could and couldn't provide and what we could and couldn't afford. And the fourth commitment was to come back within three months to another public meeting and explain what the options going forward are. Um, unfortunately that's been slightly delayed because of the, the local elections. So now that public meeting will be at the, at the end of May. Um, what we do recognise though is the enormous commitment of the people of HENA to the hospital and to this particular site. And going forward, what we think is particularly important that um, whatever facilities are on this site, then local people are able to feel that same level of attachment and ownership to whatever is here. Well, thanks again for taking time out to uh, come along and answer all these questions that have been put to you both today. Thanks, Dave. Thank you.